RGB and UV on the same strip? <laughs> Introducing the RGB UV hybrid LED strips from CableMod. Click on the link in the description for more info. Please use responsibly. What's up, guys? If you're watching this video on the day of upload, the embargo on Intel's 7th generation core processors has finally lifted, giving me free reign to spill the beans on Kaby Lake and its Z270 chipset. But in light of preparing for CES in Las Vegas, which is practically here, I'm keeping this launch video short and sweet, with a set of benchmarks between the flagship KB Lake Core i7 7700K and its direct successor, the Skylake Core i7 6700K, to see what increase in gaming performance one might benefit from when upgrading to the newer platform. Now, as a semi-spoiler, we're not going to be seeing through-the-roof gains here, because KB Lake is just an optimization of the same 14 nanometer architecture that Skylake is based on. Not to mention, both carry the same 4-core 8-thread count and cache capacity. Although clock speeds see a nice boost in the new core lineup, much of the hype surrounding KB Lake involves support for features like Intel's super-fast Optane storage technology and a wider range of interfaces with Z270, such as onboard USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C. Now, are these cool next-level features that we should get excited about? Yes. Will they increase our frame rates and make our games prettier? Not a chance. Still, I would be a fool to think that would stop you guys from asking whether or not you should upgrade from Skylake to Kaby Lake specifically for gaming, which is why I've made this video to tell you in a nutshell, no. To back this claim up, I used a number of constants for our testing, including 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance LPX DDR4 at 3200, the Corsair H100i GTX V2, a GTX 1070 Founders Edition running at reference speeds, a 1TB Crucial MX200, and an old but still working Corsair HX 750W power supply. The only variables in this test were the CPUs, of course, and the motherboards. For Z170, I employed the Asus Maximus 8 formula, and its new challenger, the Z270 Gaming M7 from MSI. For the Skylake 6700K, I was able to overclock it to 4.6 GHz, while the 7700K, which turbos to 4.5 out of the box, was able to hit 4.9 GHz after some quick tuning in the BIOS, and this is certainly one of the bigger attractions of KB Lake. Awesome overclocking potential and higher clock speeds over its predecessor. Finally, all games were tested on the 376.33 NVIDIA drivers on Windows 10, on a motherboard retail box, on a crappy table I got at Walmart. True story. With all that said, let's fire up the benchmarks and see how these two chips stack up. Jeez Louise, this is the biggest stalemate since that one time I played chess and it was a stalemate. Shut up. I know I told you guys not to expect any huge gains, but I'm not sure there were any gains to begin with. I mean, the 7700K's widest lead was 3 FPS in GTA 5 at 1080p, and the rest of the results were so close, there's really no distinct winner. It's basically a wash. While this seems kinda, no, really disappointing at first, the upside here is that if you have a 6700K that you're mostly using for gaming, you don't have to feel like you're being left behind with this new release. These kinds of tests are a constant reminder that most games today are still heavily GPU bound, and based on this initial batch of results, Skylake seems to be just as capable at gaming as its refined counterpart. 
I would have loved to compare thermals like I normally do, but at the time of filming, KB Lake isn't yet recognized by monitoring software, so that'll have to wait for a future video. That is all I've got for now, guys. Sorry if the info was a bit light for this launch, but I'm sure there's no shortage of KB Lake content popping up as we speak. Till next time, don't forget to toss me a like on the video, and I hope you guys are having a great new year so far. Feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and if all goes well, I will see y'all in the next video at CES 2017. Have a good one.